Hey guys, this is God of Politics. Welcome back to a brand new video. But before we get started with this video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, join the Discord that is linked down in the description. Make sure you also join the mock up that is in the Discord. We are getting a lot of more people signed up, so you should sign up too. It's going to be a fun, interesting event that we're doing in the Discord server, so make sure you join it down there. But in today's video, I'm going to be analyzing the primary results, most importantly from Kentucky and New York. New York had a lot of congressional primaries. Kentucky had the uh, Senate primary. First, looking at you know the presidential result, Biden obviously got the most amount of votes. But one of the interesting things we've seen is that Jefferson County, like in Louisville, has not come in at all yet, which is the biggest county. We can see it has 623 precincts. Nowhere else comes even close except for, you know, there's pretty much nowhere else that comes even close to that. So that's going to be a big interesting event when that comes out. And it doesn't really matter for the presidential race, but what it does matter for is the Senate race where you have Amy McGrath, the well-funded Democrat endorsed by people like Chuck Schumer against Charles Booker, who's a progressive candidate who's gained a lot of traction and steam uh, because of the Black Lives Matter protest. And again, we can see here that none of Louisville has come in. You can actually, because you, you can see right now that uh, Amy McGrath is leading by 6.4 percentage points here, but I can speculate that Jefferson County, the biggest county in the state, the most urban part of the state, will be going more to Charles Booker. It'll have a higher African American population, and it'll just be better overall for Charles Booker, which will mean that he might be able to make a lot of gains. You'd expect people like Amy McGrath to do better in the suburbs, but we can see in these suburbs here, you know, small suburbs, that Charles Booker has actually been doing well. It kind of looks like you know, vomits just all across the map here. No no real trend in terms of who's doing well here, who's doing well there. But we'll have to see until Louisville comes in. But currently, Amy McGrath is ahead. I think this is going to tighten. I did predict Amy McGrath would win. I, I would still say that she has... I would still say that she has a slight edge. But, um, you know, this race could really go either way. Um, getting to these New York primaries here, the New York primaries, if we look at the presidential uh, presidential result, we can see 98% reporting here. Joe Biden has 65% of the vote. Bernie Sanders actually has 19, which means he'll actually get some delegates. And while it does say 98% reporting, it's not really 98% reporting because, again, the same thing with this. You have a lot of mail-in ballots because, think, you, you haven't gotten any of the 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 votes from Jefferson County from today. Uh, and then you got to get the mail-in ballots, which aren't going to be tabulated till next Wednesday, July 1st. So that's going to be another interesting thing. And what that actually means is that what somebody tweeted out, Jennifer Medina of the New York Times tweeted out here, is that the most clear thing of tonight is that mail-in ballots mean that elections are unlikely to be a one-night affair. So this could really mean that the 2020 election, the general election, may not be decided for a week or so. And that's really a scary thing to think about. But it's a reality that we're seeing nowadays with all this mail-in ballots here. So if you look at the New York results, we can see every, every county is coming in. Uh, you know, Joe Biden obviously did very well in everywhere, basically. Bernie did some uh, areas better than others, but overall, that doesn't really matter. Looking at some of these individual congressional districts, you have Yvette Clark, who thought she would have a, uh, you know, a big challenger opponent. Doesn't seem to have been that way. In the 11th district, you have Nicole Maliotakis, who some people label as a rhino, who's going to go against Mac Rose in a district Trump won by six points. So that's going to be a very interesting result here. The 12th congressional district, you have Carolyn Maloney, an incumbent who is 74 years old going against the challenger Siraj Patel who is 36 years old who won more than 40% of the vote last time this is a rematch of the 2018 primary and as you can see here Carolyn Maloney is ahead by 1.5 percentage points but there is a lot of mainland balance to be cast and you know I'm just completely speculating here but if you don't know too much about the 12th congressional district of New York this is an area that includes Queens and Manhattan everybody knows Manhattan East Manhattan East Manhattan is a very rich part of Manhattan and you know a lot of people because New York was the center of the crisis a lot of people left New York and went to other areas many of those people would have been voting by mail and that's the area Carolyn Maloney did best in so people People saying the mail-in ballots are going to benefit Siraj Patel. I kind of doubt that. I do still expect Carolyn Maloney to win. I actually didn't predict this uh, for some reason, but I do still expect Carolyn Maloney to win. But it is going to be 
quite close when it's also in done. And as for the 14th congressional district, AOC Alexandria Ocasio Cortez ended up winning her district as well. People were saying, oh, AOC could lose, AOC could lose. She ended up winning by, uh, you know, 53 points. So that's quite an interesting result. You have Michelle Caruso Carrera, who's actually well funded and, you know, forced AOC to put on an attack ad. Um, which is quite interesting. The 15th congressional district, where you had Ruben Diaz, a perceived front runner, who was actually, you know, a conservative type of Democrat. He was pro life. He was, uh, I believe, like anti immigration or something like that, anti gay, something like that. Um, but he it seems like he's not going to win here. Uh, you know, he didn't do very well at all. Richie Torres, I believe, who is a pro- another progressive, seems to have won this primary. I did predict this result. I predicted it correctly. Richie Torres ended up winning. Uh, Ruben Diaz actually came in third place here, so that's actually quite an interesting thing. You had a lot of candidates running, but in the end, when it was all said and done, Richie Torres ended up winning. 100% reporting will have some million pounds, but I doubt that's going to change the result. And then the big one, the one that got the most attention, was the 16th Congressional District. The 16th Congressional District, you had the incumbent Elliot Engel, uh, head of the, I believe, Foreign Affairs Committee uh, in the House, who is a three-decade incumbent here, who was actually endorsed by Hillary Clinton, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Andrew Cuomo, who has actually been defeated by Jamal Bowman. It's only 92% reporting, but, you know, he's winning by 25 percentage points. This is a huge win for progressives. Jamal Bowman is, uh, you know, a former middle school principal or something like that. Now the candidate for Congress beating a three-decade incumbent in the 16th Congressional District. So he'll be in Congress for a while, similar to AOC, assuming she runs for Senate, which, you know, that's that's another topic to talk about. But it looks like Jamal Bowman has won this primary quite easily, and he will go on to be the Democratic representative for the 16th Congressional District. Another progressive has won Mondaire Jones in the uh, 17th Congressional District. Um, you know, Mondaire Jones has done very, very well here, and that's another win for progressives. The 24th Congressional District, you can see Dana Valter here, has won here. These, uh, this is the primary to defeat John Katko. Dana Balter is the same person that ran against her in 2018. She's not a very good candidate, and so this is bad news for Democrats because they don't really want to run the same candidate who lost by five points in the district that Hillary won in a D-plus-9 environment. I'm not even sure how that happened. So Dana Balter is not a good candidate for Democrats, and that's going to be a disappointing result for Democrats here. And as for the 27th Cong- uh, Congressional District, uh, special election, you had Chris Collins here who resigned after pleading guilty to federal insider trading charges. Um, you know, this is a very Republican district. Chris, Chris Jacobs ended up winning, but actually by more than what Trump won the district, which is quite an interesting result in terms of revelations in upstate New York. And so, you know, I've just gone through all these results. Here's some very interesting results here. Um, it is quite interesting here. Um, but, you know, we had some surprises, but not really too many surprises, to be honest. I believe that the biggest surprise is probably the 12th Congressional District, how close this was. But I do still expect Carolyn Maloney to win, but we'll have to wait for the million ballots. Then we'll be counted for a week, and that's a very long time. Um, but, you know, the general election is probably going to be the same thing. We might, not have any, we might not have many votes counted till November 10th, which is, you know, not what I want to see, but... It is what it is. So, thank you all for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Join the Discord and join the mock of. Make sure you join the mock of. The mock of is quite a fun thing we're doing. Uh, we've got a lot of Democrats, less Republicans. We need some more Republicans to sign up, but it's a good thing to do. Join the server for details on it. You can ask any questions. Me and other people are, are very welcome to answering them. You can fill out the form. But yeah, enough about that. So, thank you all for watching this video, and I will see you guys later.